deadliest by size. The largest known black holes are ultramassive, containing tens of billions of solar masses. Their destructive potential comes from the amount of matter they can trap and the scale of their accretion systems. An accretion disk around an ultramassive black hole can extend for light years, generating more radiant power than all the stars in its host galaxy combined. These disks shine in X-rays, ultraviolet, and extreme radiation that can sterilize any planetary system within reach. Their jets, when present, can stretch hundreds of thousands of light years and influence the structure of entire galaxy clusters. Ton 618 is a prime example. It is one of the heaviest confirmed black holes, with a mass of more than 66 billion suns. Its accretion disk makes it shine as a quasar so luminous that it is visible from more than 10 billion light years away. A black hole of this scale could devour entire star systems without noticeable growth in its mass, and its outflows could heat and strip gas across galactic environments, halting the birth of new stars. Another is the black hole at the center of the Phoenix A cluster. This object powers radio jets that inflate cavities in the cluster's hot gas, each bubble larger than the entire Milky Way. The total energy released is hundreds of millions of times greater than a gamma-ray burst, but spread out over millions of years. Any galaxy caught nearby would have its gas reservoir disrupted, effectively shutting down its future star formation. These ultramassive black holes represent the upper limit of gravitational engines in the universe. Their deadliness lies not in ripping individual planets apart, but in the ability to reshape the evolution of entire galaxies and clusters, extinguishing conditions that would otherwise support habitable worlds. Deadliest by activity, the most active black holes are quasars and blazars, powered by thick accretion disks feeding at high rates. When matter spirals inward, it is compressed and heated to millions of degrees, radiating across the electromagnetic spectrum. The energy output can exceed a thousand times the luminosity of the Milky Way. This radiation alone, if Earth were inside the danger zone, would be enough to strip atmospheres and sterilize planetary surfaces. Jets make these active black holes even deadlier. Magnetic fields around the accretion disk channel part of the inflowing matter into narrow, relativistic outflows. When these jets are aligned with our line of sight, the black hole appears as a blazar, magnifying the observed brightness. The particles within the jets travel near the speed of light, carrying lethal doses of radiation. An exposed planet would suffer atmospheric ionization, ozone layer destruction, and climate instability. J2157-3602 is an example of extreme activity. This quasar harbors a black hole growing at one of the fastest known rates in the universe, consuming nearly an Earth's worth of matter every second. The light from its accretion disk outshines entire galaxy clusters. A similar object within a few tens of millions of light years would radically alter Earth's sky and environment, overwhelming our protective magnetic field and atmosphere. The danger from activity is therefore not confined to the central galaxy itself. Radiation and jets from highly active quasars can influence intergalactic space, suppressing star formation and sterilizing wide regions. Unlike dormant supermassive black holes, which are quiet and effectively harmless at distance, active black holes create powerful zones of hazard that stretch far beyond their event horizons. Deadliest by proximity. The closer a black hole is to Earth, the more immediate the risk, even if its size and activity are modest. Stellar mass black holes, formed from the collapse of massive stars, usually range from a few to several dozen solar masses. On their own, most are dormant and nearly invisible, posing little hazard. The threat rises if one is located within a few hundred light years and begins accreting gas from a companion star. Cygnus X1 is a prime example. It lies about 6,000 light years away in the constellation Cygnus. It is actively pulling matter from a nearby blue supergiant star. As this material falls into the black hole, it produces powerful X-ray emissions. At its present distance, the radiation does not affect Earth. But if an object like Cygnus 10-1 were within a few tens of light years, the X-rays and energetic particles could disrupt Earth's atmosphere damaging the ozone layer and exposing the surface to harmful solar and cosmic radiation. V. 404 Cygni is another nearby binary system. It contains a stellar mass black hole that undergoes periodic outbursts when large amounts of matter suddenly fall in. 
These eruptions release intense X-rays and relativistic jets. A close encounter with such a system would flood space with deadly radiation, threatening any biosphere in range. There is also the danger of rogue or runaway black holes. These are compact objects that have been ejected from their host galaxies or star systems, wandering through interstellar space. A rogue black hole passing near the solar system would not need to directly collide with Earth. Its gravity could destabilize orbits, scatter comets from the Oort cloud, and trigger bombardments that reshape the planet's surface and biosphere. Proximity determines how much of a black hole's destructive power actually reaches us. While ultramassive quasars are terrifying in scale, their distance places them beyond practical danger. By contrast, a small, stellar-mass black hole within a few light-years could pose an immediate and catastrophic hazard to Earth, regardless of its intrinsic size. Ultramassive Killers Among the most extreme black holes ever measured are ultramassive ones, objects exceeding 10 billion solar masses. TON 618 stands out as one of the largest with a confirmed mass of over 66 billion suns. Its event horizon would encompass the orbit of Neptune if placed in our solar system. The accretion disk feeding TON 618 produces so much light that it rivals the combined output of thousands of galaxies. Any planet within tens of thousands of light years would be exposed to lethal radiation. Another is J2157, 3602, a quasar powered by a black hole swallowing matter at one of the fastest rates ever observed. Its luminosity is equivalent to several quadrillion suns, and it is still rapidly growing. A system like this, if located in our galactic neighborhood, would strip atmospheres, sterilize planetary surfaces, and halt star formation over vast regions. These ultramassive killers are not only destructive in their immediate environments, but also change the fate of their host galaxies. Their gravitational pull organizes the orbits of millions of stars, while their outflows heat surrounding gas and prevent new stars from forming. Over cosmic timescales, they can shut down entire galaxies, leaving them cold and lifeless. Galactic Destroyers these are black holes that sit at the cores of galaxies and actively shape their evolution. Sagittarius A is the supermassive black hole at the center of the Milky Way. It contains about 4 million solar masses. Right now, it is relatively quiet, but evidence shows it has flared in the past. If it entered an active phase again, the radiation and jets could extend thousands of light years, impacting star-forming regions in our galaxy and potentially altering conditions for life. M87 star is another example, located in the giant elliptical galaxy Messier 87. It has a mass of over 6 billion suns and powers a jet that stretches nearly 5,000 light years. That jet emits high energy particles that can heat and disturb gas across the galaxy, shutting down star formation on massive scales. If Earth were anywhere near its jet cone, the planet's surface would be exposed to continuous radiation far exceeding natural background levels, leading to rapid atmospheric collapse. Quasar cores represent the peak of galactic destruction. These are black holes in a feeding frenzy, surrounded by luminous disks and launching powerful jets. They do not simply affect their host galaxies, they influence intergalactic space by blasting hot winds into the cosmic web. This feedback process regulates galaxy growth across the universe. On the scale of planets and biospheres, such cores create wide sterilization zones where stable, habitable worlds cannot exist. Binary system killers. Some of the deadliest black holes exist in pairs with normal stars, pulling in gas and producing violent outbursts. Cygnus X1 is the classic case. It is about 15 solar masses and feeds on a nearby blue supergiant. The material forms a hot accretion disk and generates powerful X-rays detectable from Earth. If Cygnus X-1 were within a few dozen light years instead of thousands, the radiation would strip Earth's protective ozone layer, exposing the planet to lethal solar ultraviolet rays. V404 Cygni is another binary system. The black hole there weighs about nine solar masses and undergoes occasional eruptions when large amounts of gas suddenly fall inward. These eruptions release flares thousands of times brighter than its normal state, along with jets of high-energy particles. A system like this inside our immediate galactic neighborhood would be catastrophic for any planets nearby, as periodic outbursts could prevent stable conditions for life, 
In binary systems, deadliness comes not from sheer mass but from continuous or sporadic accretion. The constant radiation, sudden flares, and energetic jets make the environment uninhabitable. Even for stellar mass black holes, their relatively small size allows them to hide easily in the galaxy, making them harder to detect until they become active. Runaway and Rogue Black Holes Not all black holes remain anchored in galactic centers or binary systems. Some are ejected through gravitational interactions or recoil from asymmetric mergers, becoming runaways that drift through interstellar space. These rogue black holes carry with them the same destructive potential but without the predictable confinement of a host system. Astronomers have identified several candidates for rogue black holes moving through the Milky Way. One example is a stellar mass black hole detected by the way its gravity bends the light of background stars, a phenomenon called microlensing. Such objects are dark, silent, and nearly impossible to track unless they pass directly in front of stars. If a rogue black hole passed close to the solar system, its gravitational influence could disrupt the Oort cloud, the vast reservoir of icy bodies at the edge of our system. This disturbance would send comets hurtling inward, dramatically increasing the risk of large impacts on Earth. A more direct approach could perturb planetary orbits, destabilizing the inner solar system over time. The danger from rogue black holes lies in their unpredictability. Anchored supermassive black holes are mapped and monitored, but solitary wanderers can travel unnoticed until their effects become apparent. While the odds of a close encounter are low on human timescales, the long-term cosmic hazard remains real. What would happen if Earth was nearby? If Earth were placed close to an actively feeding black hole, the first effect would be intense radiation. High-energy X-rays and gamma rays from the accretion disk would ionize the atmosphere, destroying the ozone layer. This would expose the surface to direct solar ultraviolet radiation, lethal for most life forms. The constant particle bombardment from jets and winds would further strip atmospheric gases, eventually rendering the planet airless. If Earth were within a few light years of a quasar jet, the radiation flux would be strong enough to heat the atmosphere directly causing runaway greenhouse effects or global cooling depending on the balance of energy input and atmospheric chemistry. Either pathway would destabilize the climate, collapse ecosystems, and end habitability within a short span of time. Closer still, strong tidal forces could rip Earth apart. Infall toward a stellar mass black hole would stretch and compress the planet in a process called spaghettification. For ultramassive black holes, the tidal forces at the event horizon are weaker, so Earth might cross the boundary intact, only to be shredded deeper inside. In either case, the planet would be destroyed once gravitational forces exceeded structural limits. How far away are we really safe? Safety from black holes depends on distance and activity. For stellar mass black holes, Earth is safe as long as they remain more than a few dozen light years away. At such distances, their gravitational pull is negligible compared to that of the Sun, and even if accreting, their radiation weakens with distance, according to the inverse square law. For supermassive black holes, the safe margin is much larger. A quasar emitting a thousand times the luminosity of the Milky Way could sterilize planets tens of thousands of light years away if the radiation is directed along a jet. If Earth were inside such a beam, even a separation on galactic scales could be dangerous. Fortunately, no known active quasar is close enough or aligned with us to pose a threat. Sagittarius, a star, the supermassive black hole at the center of the Milky Way, is about 26,000 light years from Earth. At its current quiet state, it is harmless. If it entered a quasar phase, the radiation would still be diluted by distance, but regions of the galaxy closer to the core could face disrupted star formation and elevated radiation levels. Earth's position in the outer disk provides a protective buffer. Closest calls in cosmic history. The Milky Way has experienced events where black hole activity could have influenced conditions for life. Evidence suggests that Sagittarius A star was more active a few million years ago. Gamma ray Fermi bubbles, vast lobes of high energy emission extending above and below the galactic plane, are relics of a past outburst. If Earth had been located closer to the galactic center, the radiation from that phase could have significantly altered the planet's atmosphere. Astrophysicists also study microquasars within our galaxy, such as SS-433, which ejects powerful jets of matter. While currently far away, 
A system like SS-433 inside a few hundred light years would represent a severe hazard. There is no evidence that such a close pass has occurred in Earth's history. But the possibility of similar systems forming or drifting closer cannot be ruled out on long timescales. Another potential threat comes from black hole mergers. When two massive black holes collide, they release gravitational waves along with bursts of energy in surrounding material. While gravitational waves themselves are not harmful, the associated radiation from disrupted gas could be destructive within the local region. Past mergers in nearby galaxies may have reshaped their environments, but Earth has remained safely outside the impact zones. These examples show that black holes have shaped galactic environments repeatedly, but Earth's position has so far kept it beyond the reach of direct, lethal influence.